This is Maharajas of Skill, a podcast where we go behind the scenes and talk to founders who are demolishing the myths around building and scaling a big business in India. These are the stories that have shattered the assumptions around Indian consumers and are changing the game completely. I am Krishna Jonakardla, serial entrepreneur, co-founder of Flit, the fashion locator in town and startup mentor, bringing you these stories. Hey listeners, this is Krishna, your host from Maharajas of Scale. And uh, today we have an exciting CTO who has uh, founded a startup, and I will come to that in a second, who's changing the world of what he calls as uh, conversation media. In the world of social media is full of imagery and content, but at the core of all of this are conversations or is a conversation between people. Now the uh, wonderful thing about conversations are that conversations can happen in a variety of languages. Although the code on the internet is po- possibly written in English, but all humans don't speak English, but we do speak our own languages and enabling those Indic languages to join the mainstream. And in, in fact, the other way, the English substream to join the mainstream of Indic languages through conversation media is what Rahul is in fact transforming. Rahul Prasad of Babul AI is with us today. Babul has touched uh, millions of people and uh, Rahul is here to share his story with us. Rahul, welcome to the show. Hi, Krista. Thanks for inviting me. You have very accurately defined what we are working on. Thanks for that. We'll be talking much more about this later on in the podcast. Wonderful. So, Rahul, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're working on right now. I am from Jamsetpur, Jharkhand. And in fact, after COVID, we are still uh, I have come back to my hometown after a long time. So I did my schooling over there. Then I went to a college, which is uh, not uh, well known to everyone. It's uh, Sikkim Manipal Institute of Technology. And then I did jobs in multiple MNCs. And later on with Ankit, my younger brother, we founded a company called Touch Talent. And from there, we pivoted multiple times. And then we came uh, to this place where we are right now. It's the Bobble AI Technologies. We are building the world's first conversation media platform. And it's big. It's, it's, it's proven and it's needed. Wonderful. Talk to us a little bit about uh, what Touch Talent was about and what prompted you to start Touch Talent. Before I start with Touch Talent, I would like to tell you about uh, uh, what I used to do earlier. What, uh, when I was a kid, I saw there was a dot-com boom and I, I saw that HTML, CSS, these are some of the things that I could learn. I learned all those things in school and I started creating websites for some of the SMEs. And these SMEs, I used to sell the website at, uh, at some cost and I used to get my pocket money from there. And this is how I started my journey of doing business. When I went to college, I still continued that. And I was, I didn't have to ask money from my father. And I completed my college doing the same business. And when I graduated, after graduating, I wanted to gain some more experience. Like I wanted to see how a blue chip company's experience looks like. I wanted to see how an MNC experience looked like. And I wanted to see how, what a startup experience looked like. I experimented with all the things because I, did, I just didn't want to get into one job. I just wanted to see it all and then decide what I want to do. In all of the uh, companies I have worked on, I believed I liked the startup experience much, much more than what is there in other companies. We used to work all the time. It was, it was, it was exciting as well as challenging. We used to work from day and night and that's the journey that's that's the experience i like the most and while i was doing that i had a uh, i had my own company which i used to fund uh, at night so whatever salary i used to get i used to invest in the company it was a service it was a service based company and i th- uh, I, uh, I i saw that the company that i was working on was not growing at the scale that i wanted to wanted it to go Maybe because I was not able to invest 100% of my time at that time. But it grew to a good uh, 10-15 employees uh, company. 
it was a service based company we used to do the same thing making web applications and website for other companies and all but at the same time ankit was in iit delhi ankit is my young uh, younger brother he 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 was working on the concept of getting fund uh, to build the company and this was totally new to me how what is this thing that how can some company with a, with just a proof of concept can get such a great amount of fund and and uh, create a larger company so i was very fascinated with this concept so what i did was i closed everything down and I, then i moved with ankit to uh, delhi so we used to share a small apartment we used to work together and uh, we built touchtalent.com touch talent at that time it was social networking uh, social networking company it's it was a social networking company for creative people for example if you are a poet or if you are an artist if you are a painter you could go ahead and upload your art or your creativity uh, in, into the website into touchtalent.com and you could net you could network around that you could comment you can like dislike all the social networking things features were there in the in touchtalent.com so that was the first thing that we uh, we built we got funded for that and that that and we realized that it's it's a very niche community that creative people only 2% of the people are professionally creative and out of them very at that time around 2011 12 at that time not many such people were technologically uh, advanced they were not able to use the product properly and it was very difficult to gain the uh, the daily active user that you wanted to gain it was very difficult to expand exponentially so what we did was we thought why not make this 98% of the uh, 90 98% of them creative so we came up with this concept of avatar making it's a simple concept where you take your photograph and it's com- uh, converted into an avatar we want to we wanted to make everyone creative and uh, the concept that we created it became viral and uh, this is how bobble was born so that's the journey till bobble very interesting so you asked did you ask about the talent and i i kind of told everything till now very interesting so let's go back to the beginnings a uh, little bit then i uh, wanted to touch upon that in a little while but i'm glad you kicked that off so coming from jamshedpur which is in fact one of india's best towns and there is a whole history for jamshedpur itself the way uh, tisco or tata iron and steel or tata steel built up the town and there is almost nothing existed so coming from that town what inspired you to get into computers was it just a love of technology and uh, what was that that drove you was it pocket money or was it the ability to be independent talk to us about that part it's a funny story it's a very funny story so before jamshedpur i was in a even smaller town it's called chai basa uh, it's, it's 60 kilometers from here it's like a it's like a village and uh, my father and our family we had a joint family over there and we used to run a computer education program uh, to the village people and uh, i i saw a computer over there and i started learning it so it was not it was i was not very much fascinated about that but i just used to love the uh, love to play mario and other games over there and i knew using uh, dos how to how to move to a folder how to copy a folder or how to start a game very basic things about dos i i used to know about that but when we moved to jamshedpur so computer uh, then windows 95 came and windows 98 came and all those things were very uh, very much famous but nobody used to know about dos and i was the one who used to know about dos so uh, in the class i was like a hero i used uh, everyone used to think that he is the person who knows computer very well and that that motivation that everyone is looking up to me that i am a, i am something who knows a lot about, about computer motivated me to learn more and more and this is how i got into computer so i when i started learning i saw a particular opportunities of creating a website selling a website that came later before this it was just this funny story that made me 
get in, get interested on computers so you were the king of the command line interface so to speak <laughs> not exactly but okay in my school <laughs> in in your school in your school yeah i i don't know if you know some of our listeners will understand uh, the command line interface because dos is a lot of coding still is command line interface although a lot of it has been automated there are libraries available now right most uh, most of us like uh, that uh, the developers who are like very in, very much into coding they like command line interface i i still used to love command line interface i can automate a lot of things using command lines which cannot be done using graphical user interface right right yeah i think they both have their uh, you know pluses and minuses if you are if you are building something predominantly visual for instance uh, when you are building a page that has to be visually appealing uh, it is far more easier to move blocks around but as opposed to that if you are writing a program that's going to automate certain tasks they they have their own uh, uh, nuances so that's how you got uh, so was it a passion and that little bit of what can i say celebrity dumb that you enjoyed at school looks like that has eventually channeled itself into you being an entrepreneur how did your fas- uh, how did you evolve from fascination with dos to actually building stuff for others hmm. so wh- i was always looking for something so when you are a hero you have to way uh, you have to be ahead of the curve because you have to know more than what others know so that you can be in that position forever so i i always used to find new things so that i can prove that i am the one who knows much more than others so this is what made me learn more and more so i used to so html css those things were not like at that time it was just introduced in our courses but uh, but nobody used to know like you can create a website but how will you host it how will you have your own dot com how will you have like a rahul prasad dot com something like that so i used to research more about that and just just it 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 just motiva- motivated me to be on the edge of the curve to learn more and that's that's how i kept myself motivated and that's how i learned how to create website and then when everybody was learning about website i used to learn about how to create web applications all those things interesting so did you fund your own education through your own your money uh, you can say say that because i was the one who <laughs> uh, who paid the loan <laughs> after i get, got the job in fact everybody does that so everyone is like oh, takes the loan then he they pays the loan once they get the job so this is how i funded my education well what i meant was uh, since you said you've been building uh, you had been building websites for quite some time around college as well i was wondering if you were funding your uh, college back then we yeah, used to spend it on <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is uh, in in my case we had a situation my my father is an engineer and my fa- my uncle who is my father's brother is actually a doctor and my family is a family of professionals and um, it it cost a decent amount of money around the time i had to choose what to what to educate myself in or what to choose as my educational stream and my father told me there are you know you, you are somebody who's wanted to always uh, tread a different path and tread a dip- different path uh, do you want to be an engineer or a medico because that is something that a lot of people choose and maybe you are better off doing something else the the other side of the story was if i had chosen to be a doctor or an engineer my father didn't have the ability to pay for either of them without getting into deep debt so i chose to pursue my ca uh, so i'm a chartered accountant and uh, you pay you get paid a stipend and i funded for all of my education through my stipend <laughs> so <laughs> so i couldn't uh, trouble uh, trouble my father in fact uh, he was already burdened back then with other things so that's exactly where i was going so that's awesome so then talk to us about that experimentation i i love what you said in fact there is this commonly held notion that uh, for instance uh, there there are enough case studies and we have malcolm gladwell who talks about the 10000 hour uh, concept where you dedicate yourself to something put in 10000 hours and uh, you actually become a pro at it so the whole notion 
in in the us for instance you have reading and, and math schools called kumon there are a variety of them so kids especially the ones that are of chinese descent are sent to kumon because they are taught from a very young age that they have to be good at reading they have to be good at math so they have to be fiercely competitive and that sort of thought process also follows into a lot of other things that they do if they want to be a violinist later in their life they are made to go through that and a common example that is cited about that is tiger woods whose father was a golfer but not a golfer who was as accomplished as tiger woods and apparently one day in the garage when tiger woods was 4 uh, years old he picked up a golf club and hit a straight perfect putting shot and uh, there is enough to show that there is a book called tiger traits and there are a b- bunch of them so there's one set of you know knowledge that says you have to start this much earlier and another set there is now contradictory evidence that uh, has come out and said you have to develop a range and a, a fountain or a big example of that is roger federer roger federer is not a exceptionally trained athlete and in fact much later he picked up tennis only much later in his uh, adult life so you have contrasts i personally look at it as human beings come in all shapes and sizes and we all have our own success paths but looks like you sort of taken the range approach or let me look at a thali of options and then in that let me see what's the dish i let me sample each one of them and let me see what's the dish that i like the most and then dive deep so talk to us about that experimental phase a little more i that's not an experimental phase that i have been doing right now as well so whenever i get one option i always seek for multiple options that i cannot just take one option i i must have multi, at least two options so that i can choose if uh, if i'm given one option i have i have to go and find other options myself so that is why that is what i'm still doing i think yeah as you said uh, you accurately said that humans come in different shapes and uh, obviously something works for someone something else works for someone else so for me what worked is my curiosity that i am always curious about what's happening around and uh, uh, how if, if this is is this the only way of doing stuff or there are other ways that can, that it can be done as well and this one more thing that i always keep in mind that i have to just make sure that uh, everything is ready at any point of time so whenever i develop anything or whenever i'm working on something so i uh, i never plan it in such a way that it's a large project so it's going to take 6 months then i'm going to deliver it after 6 months so i i always make it a, uh, it in such a way that after every one month there should be a deliverable so i should be ready at any point of time so that is the funda that i believe in and uh, this this is what i would like to say about the top interesting and in and in that phase you mentioned you wanted to get exposure to a job what was this and you also mentioned about this one company that got funded uh, can you elaborate on that a little more and what fascinated you about that funding okay the the company i was talking about that got funded is uh, uh, is our company the the touch talent i was talking about okay so ankit so i was fascinated about the fact that how can this happen that uh, i was more into the service based industry that you get me the job i'll complete the job and uh, the and i'll keep the profit so it's very difficult to scale that kind of services for example if i build a website i earn something if i build 10 website i'll earn 10 times that right but then also i'll have to employ a few more people for that so this is the funda i used to know that this is how companies are formed so you earn profit you uh, invest the profit back into the company and you grow and this is what exactly i was doing but then i saw that ankit is uh, working on a new concept to get funding and uh, and and to build the company around the funding so so you build proof of concept you get the fund and then you build the whole uh, product and then you scale so there's a funding for every round you there's a first seed funding for proof of concept there's a there's series a for uh, uh for growth there is another round if you want to go for revenue so th- this i was very much fascinated with this concept so that's why i left whatever i was working on and then i came to delhi and joined hands with ankit and started the company 
Awesome. So, Touch Talent was you talked about a series of pivots that you did and go, go into detail please and it sounds like an interesting thing there is one one thing in the world today for instance there are a lot of visual platforms uh, video while we have youtube and the likes of uh, tiktok for uh, video you have instagram and the likes of instagram for uh, imagery and short videos as well so it's easy for visual arts to actually find uh, an outlet but when it comes to there are a lot of other artists as well right so so touch talent should have actually you were you too early so talk about that journey and then go a little deeper i know you touched upon it briefly go a little deeper what are the things that work what are the things that didn't work and for each of the pivots that you did what were the what what is it that you looked at and why did you do the pivot that you did okay so in touch talent we only did one pivot and we pivoted to bobble and most of the pivots were in bobble so i'll talk much uh, more about that in some time let's first talk about touch talent so as i said a uh, very less people are uh, professionally creative others are creative but they do not post it and they're not uh, like uh, i if i'm creative i'm going to post it in my in a social media this this was the story at that time right now you can see multiple people posting what they are creating in youtube channel posting what they are creating in instagram there are multiple social media where where they are doing so but at that time none of this was there and we wanted to be the platform which where you users where people can do that maybe we were ahead of the time at that time because uh, uh, internet connections was not that good enough and people were not that tech savvy phones were still not that good enough so maybe we were ahead of the time but then we realized this and we knew that this is not uh, scaling up at at the rate that we wanted to scale up we wanted everyone to use the talent.com but how can we make everyone creative how can we make how can we change the behavior of everyone so that is what we wanted to do and for that we pivoted we pivoted once to make everyone creative and that pivot is bobble that pivot is the bobble app that we created at that time so we thought if if somebody can take a selfie and we give them freedom to create the avatar with, with the selfie they can work on the self and they can work on the avatar they can choose their dresses they can choose their body type and they can write their own text and they can create something comical from there so this is one way to drive creative creativity from people so this is one thing that we were correct about uh, the pivot that uh, we thought we were correct about that and because it went viral and many people started downloading our application and many people started working uh using our application and they loved our product before we uh, before i go ahead and talk more about how we pivoted further into bobble i would like to tell you few good examples of some of the growth hack that we used to do for uh for touch talent so this is something i think our uh, audience will love because this is something which they can implement on their own as well so one of the story is related to twitter we knew that uh, some people used to uh, flaunt their work on twitter and people used to at that time people used to post their uh, creative solutions on twitter so we, what we did was we wanted to create a ripple around all uh, all the things which are being posted on touch talent so at that time there was there was a concept of twitter list where you can create a list and you can post to list at once and everyone who is in the list will get will get the will get the tweet so this is one way of reaching to people who are not following you so this uh, we used it as a growth hack so we uh, we created an application which will just look at uh, the recent post to find out people who are recently online and we used to create a list of that so everything was automated there was an app we wrote an application which will find the find the people who have recently posted put them into a list and then we can start tweeting on those list so that gave me uh, gave us a good amount of growth from twitter so every one of us used to sit together 
so we had one apartment so as we grew we we rented another apartment nearby so all of all of the all of us used to sit together uh, around a chair and we used to do tweeting uh, on, on those list based on uh, what the topic is about so this gave us a lot of users we and uh, this was one of the growth hack that we did on twitter and this one uh, one more growth hack that uh, that we did which people can implement even right now so this is uh, this is called reverse image search hack so w- what we did was we hacked google's rem- uh, reverse image search we figured out how it works and uh, so what happens is when you are searching for some picture like art of a beautiful girl in rain what you will do is uh, on google you will find a, 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 an art which is posted on touchtalent.com but when you click on that you get the image and you can directly use the image you you can uh, you are not coming to touchtalent.com to get the image so we are not getting that user so our uh, so our assets were being used through google and we didn't even used to know about that so we hacked uh, the google image search in a way that uh, that is fairly technical uh, maybe i can uh, uh, light some uh, i can set some light on that but this this is a referral part which is associated when you open a, an image so if that referral is google then we used to know that the, the user is trying to download the image from google and whenever user opens that image instead of sending that image we used to move them to our our website this way user still gets the image but they are not directly taking it away from google they have to come to our page and then take it then they can download it from there and and in our in our page we used to so uh, similar images and all so this way user if user likes our content they will register uh, on our platform and we and it gave us immense organic growth and this is something which is working even right now so we are not doing anything on it just the reverse image hack is applied and anyone who is trying to find something and if it's our asset they have to come to our platform and then download it so these were the two major growth hacks which we did in trust talent platform very interesting so then the fundamental reason for a pivot from touch talent to bobble was because you wanted instead of featuring creators you wanted people to become creators and how did you go about coming to that conclusion what sort of data did you look at or was it a hunch that made that pivot happen so we are we take most of we used to take in fact we are still taking most of our decisions based on the data that we have we collect for example there are multiple events that we are picking up from Uh, users like when they tap on something when they swipe on something and uh, from that we used to get the insight like what user is doing who is that user so we, what we did was it's called a uh, creating personas so we created personas of the users and then we started studying the user like why is he using trustalent.com what does he do what does he want to do and what is what is the motivation behind him to use trustalent.com and the three uh, we created four personas and we realized that most of them are professionally creative and that's why they are using tastalent.com because they want to connect with other such professionals it's like behance so behance not everyone goes to behance for uh, their for the content or uh, everyone most of the creative people who are professional goes to behance to so so of their content and then to get more client it's like a portfolio for them so you by studying the personas we figured out that most of the users are professionally creative some of them are aspiring to be uh, to be professional uh, artists or painters or something so those were the users who were using us but our aim was totally different we wanted to involve as many people as we can we didn't just wanted to involve these uh, the artist and we, di- we didn't just wanted it to be a community of artists we wanted a place where you it's like art gallery so you and i can go to an art gallery we can look at uh, all the arts that is present over there we, maybe we can even buy that maybe we can just appreciate it 
we wanted something like that we wanted touch tell to be a place where people can come to look at the arts and artists and uh, we wanted an exponential growth over there and then to, from those people we wanted to enable them to become creative and we wanted to encourage them to post more pictures post more of their creative stuff so that is something that we wanted but we didn't get and that's why we had to pivot okay and how was the beginning of that pivot it was very difficult pivoting is always very difficult everyone is emotionally attached to the product that we used to have and while everyone was emotionally attached everyone is also working on something that is uh, totally new and then there was this unclarity that uh, is it going to work are users going to like it or uh, or oh, what happens if the, even this does not work so most of the things were unclear that 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 was the only problem that we had but as soon as we launched it we saw we saw an exponential growth and we we knew that it was a correct decision to make okay and then talk about the evolution from there so when we started bobble we saw the exponential growth but we also we were as we were tracking everything we used to see that people are loving us but they are not retained uh, but but they are not retaining for a much longer time they used to create their own avatar they used to share our avatars then we started to see why why people are installing a lot but they are not using us all the time so we figured that they are using us on the chat platforms and just like just like a sticker it was a avatar app it was a creativity app but they were using their creative uh, final comic thing into into the their own chats and uh, and it was very difficult for them to do that for example you when you are chatting you have to come to the application you have to create something then you have to share it back to the uh, to the to the chat and it was a very difficult thing uh, it, no, you are not going to switch to a different application while you are chatting so that's why what we did was we introduced two new features one was floating widget and another was uh, a keyboard floating widget is something like it, it floats on top of uh, your uh, whatsapp or any other messenger so when you are typing you can just tap on the floating widget and you will see all the avatars that you have created and then you can directly send from there but the, this topping uh, this floating widget we have to can, cancel the uh, this feature because android changed the api and the newer api didn't support this so we had to cancel this feature and we were remained with keyboard so another pivot was uh, so this was the next pivot point that we had to switch to a keyboard and there was one more pivot in between that when when we saw that people are using it on chat applications we saw we figured that why not why let user create everything on their own why not give them some templates like stickers so we became a sticker app so what user used to do is user can choose the sticker directly and send it directly into the platform so we just wanted to make users life easier so we were making changes on our product from avatar app we become sticker app because users wanted it then we become a sticker uh, then we become a keyboard app because users wanted it we saw that it's 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 conversation right when you are uh, when you are chatting you want to share a sticker but how do you do that so if if you have a keyboard then you can chat through the keyboard and there's a button on the keyboard you can press the button and you can send the sticker this is as easy as it can get so you are chatting in our platform as well as you are uh, you are sending the uh, you are sending stickers as well but then we realized that our keyboard used to suck because it was not that good at all it was just a proof of concept that we created and then we also realized the most of most of other keyboard used to suck as well for example gboard and other keyboard they didn't have what indian users needed indian users needed hinglist indian user needed banglist tamilist or even combination of the, uh, those things they they needed transliteration all these features at that time was missing so we started working on our keyboard because we knew keyboard is the base on which a sticker is being shared 
so we started working on keyboard we started solving those problems that user used to face we launched uh, the macaronic language like english like bengalis like tamilis and user loved us loved us so at that time when you used to use keyboard you you generally switch off auto correct because you knew that if you're going to write something in english it will got auto corrected to something in english and you you want that so people used to switch off their auto correct so with our keyboard we gave them this option that uh, now they can type in english as well and it will not get auto corrected to a wrong word but in fact it will auto correct uh, get corrected uh, to a english word if if he makes a, if they makes a spelling mistake so now typing experience become very good and then we uh, recognize that keyboard is something something which is next because keyboard is something which is used all the time and keyboard is something where mo- mo- major problem used to lie and we started solving all those problems so we pivoted to a keyboard application and while solving all the problems we realized that most of the problems cannot be solved through fundamental algorithms like swipe typing like suggestions predictions all these things no, no, all of them this this to an extent that you can write rules and you can solve these problems but if you want if you want a better precision if you want better accuracy then you have to go to artificial intelligence to solve this so what we did was we from a fundamental keyboard we pivoted to ai technologies we started working on solving the same problems to increase the accuracy and solving the new challenges as well using artificial intelligence and we become bobble ai the artificial intelligence company oh, because oh, we rebranded as bobble ai because now that every services are now that we have started recreating every services uh, every features using artificial intelligence we can also send uh, we can also use the same features as services for example translation as a service we can expose an api which you can use to do translation we can use we can uh, expose an api for speech to text and it's not just used in keyboard we are uh, we are doing we are into the business of providing uh, these features as service services to other business as well so these are the number of pivots that we did in bobble to reach where we are right now so you went from being a place for creators to enabling creators and even non creators perhaps to be creators and then eventually to sticker app and then eventually a keyboard so that's an interesting journey so this is something that i have possibly seen as the demographics of the country changes because way back then in uh, 2012 uh, one of the features was the smartphone revolution was not that widely underway we still possibly had a big amount of uh, feature phones and then by the 2014 2015s and a lot of the younger generations uh, millions of them started getting into it and a lot of them are yet to begin their professional journeys right so would you would you say the reason you know the pivot looks like in some sense it went from professional creators to casual creators and eventually ended up with conversation was directly tied to the demographic shifts that were happening i'm sorry i didn't get to get the question clearly so what i meant was the internet penetration way back then was limited to a much lesser number of people and uh, smartphones were not widely accepted so today smartphone penetration so therefore what you saw back then were professional creators and then eventually a lot of younger ones to become a professional creator take some time right so then in the meantime then there is a, the whole world is getting connected which is why you went in some sense from being a place for talent and then artists to you know a platform for conversations and enabling conversations yes exactly so uh, as and when more and more people are getting into the landscape of uh, smartphone getting uh, better internet connections so i believe there's uh, there's a need for uh, such uh, platforms where they can do such things and we 
right now we are much more into the keyboard uh, space not exactly the keyboard space but i would call it a conversation media space so more and more people are using stickers more and more people are using gifs more and more people are using emojis to express themselves there are multiple ways now you can uh, use to express yourself which was not present earlier and this has been enabled through the smartphone revolution the internet revo- the revolution that we have recently seen so in fact the last pivot that we have made is about the conversation media so i would like to talk a little mo- a little more about conversation media how do you define facebook 10 years back facebook as you may say that facebook was was a platform where people 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 used to talk uh, people facebook is a platform where people used to share pictures or share uh, their status this is how do you you define facebook right but now if if you are asked or to define what is facebook facebook you would say that it's a social media platform a social media is a coined term which everyone uses to define what facebook is similarly we are working on the next thing so after uh, after social media what's going to come next so it the the next thing is conversation media and we are we are the ones who are leading there so we are the one who have coined the uh, who have working who have been started working on conversation media and how uh, how you define conversation media is like suppose there are multiple ways you are communicating with your friends your fa- families so you may be communicating through uh, stickers you may when you are texting when you can communicate through stickers gifs emojis there are multiple ways to communicate and express yourself so what we are proposing is the conversation what which you are doing you a, br- a brand cannot be a part of conversation right now whenever there is a whenever you are sharing a sticker there is no brand around there so the right now only way of advertising to users is advertising on their face so what whenever you go to facebook there is a big chunk of large advertisement over there either there is a big video or there is something which is obstructing you from using the platform and that's how currently advertising works right now so what we are proposing is to the brand we are giving this value that they can get into the conversation of the user for example if you are saying let's go grab a coffee somewhere so what a brand can do is they can create they can have their own sticker pack within bobble ecosystem and that a user can download their sticker pack user can download their gif packs and use that to express themselves we can also make it dynamic for example when you say when you say that let's grab a coffee the sticker we will be presented will contain a starbucks brand on it just an example so certainly you are also advertising for starbucks among your group this is also something which user wants sometimes because Uh, you may be you may want to be associated with a brand because whenever you are wearing adidas you uh, you show off that i'm wearing an adidas whenever you are wearing nike nike you are you you generally people show off that they are using this brand similarly this can happen within the conversation as well so that's what we are working on we want to enable brands to get into the conversation of the user and become part of their lives user will also be benefited because now users will not see a, uh, an obstructive advertisement uh, an advertisement on their face instead of that it will be a very subtle nudge to the user so when when you are uh, when you are sharing a sticker which has a t-shirt t-shirt will have nike or adidas logo in it it will be as subtle as that user won't mind it advertisement will get their advertisement done as well their branding done as well and this will also be very trackable source for brands so right now if brands uh, do a billboard they cannot check like how many users have seen it how many users have reacted to it but if they do it through the conversation media it will be trackable as well so that is the next big thing that we are working on very interesting so do you plan to I'm going to use a term weaponize that uh, sticker or uh, that kind of branding or that kind of content 
Of course, that's the aim. We want to use stickers and chips, and there are multiple other things that can be used within the keyboard uh, to to make so it will make users' life easier as well, and it will uh, make brands' life easier as well. So, for instance, if two people are in Starbucks and uh, they met in Starbucks, they had uh, coffee, and then they clicked a selfie, and you could you could add a sticker to it. Now that sticker actually become some sort of a click whereby this it either prompts them to open the Starbucks app or places an order so it becomes much more than a sticker it becomes like a mini program that's something which is dependent on, on platform we would certainly want to do that but only this can happen only if a platform allows it for example if whatsapp allows you to tap on a sticker and go to a link we would we would obviously want to do that that is a a huge opportunity but right now many many platforms do not allow that so we are limited to what we have right now and we are playing around that but as soon as any of the platform allows that we are going to build something like that fantastic talk briefly about the funding journey so we got seed funded it's like a long time ago in 2014 and then we uh, we got first round from saf saf partners in 2015 then we got uh, another round of funding from xiaomi and then recently on 15 around 15 august uh, this year we got a round of fund from apple apple india in total we have raised about 10 million of funding so far wonderful and uh, you now have some sort of alliance or a partnership with shami isn't it yes exactly so this is one great thing so shami as you know is like it ca- it has one third of the indian market so all the phones that you uh, you see around in india one third is of the market is captured by shami and we have partnered with them and we have uh, amended it to uh, bundle pre bundle our keyboard or in all indian phones and once we do that everything is successful then we are going to go to southeast asia and europe as well so all xiaomi phones which are upcoming will be having uh, from in future will be having uh, mint keyboard so mint keyboard is the keyboard which we created specially for xiaomi keeping their specific uh, requirement in mind for example their own uh, way of onboarding their own way of uh, branding it's a white label keyboard for shami it's fantastic it's fantastic so you have made in fact uh, i think about a decade ago what one of the things about india and indic languages there's a lot of unknown history about india and uh, last year when i went to the you know we went on a europe trip and in the louvre museum which is one of the most highly highly rated and uh, exceptionally visited museums of the world there isn't even 1% or even half a percent that you can find about india and uh, the thing that keeps hitting me wherever i go when i leave india is uh, how much how can 16% of the world's population be missing from the conversation be it history or be it economics or be it in anything but the funny thing is Uh, about 8 years ago when i went to the cayman islands the cayman islands are are uh, south uh, in the caribbean and in the cayman islands about 50% of the people that work there are of in, uh, are actually indians and these are all people that used to work on cruise ships so a lot of cruise ships uh, dock on the cayman islands uh, in the grand cayman the cayman islands are a british uh, territory and uh, the thing that strikes you is something so far away and it is not even the caribbean uh, the west indies have had a different set of indian settlers but the cayman well it is part of the caribbean has a different set of people and wherever you go in the world you will find you know sh- sheer presence of indian people and by some design indian history the contribution of you know ancient india to sciences and everything else uh, has been sort of deliberately suppressed and eliminated although that is finding its way back in the other consequence of that is that one is that has been suppressed and the, with, with the growth of english there was uh, some sort of a fear uh, at least you know i used to have it that 
a lot of the regional languages a lot of the indic languages the indic expression of thought is going to disappear right if 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 for example there is a person who's speaking uh, bhojpuri and if that person has to learn english and english is the only way they can interact with the rest of the world now that imposes severe constraints and if that continues on a regular basis in about maybe four or five generations you know there won't be much of bhojpuri left right so and i used to see that but looks like with your indic keyboard uh, and uh, with all of the you know panglish the banglish the tamilish english uh, keyboards that you built you are going to inspire some sort of a renaissance in a different way i know that has not come to the desktop yet in many ways because a lot of creativity and creation does happen on the desktop so you know time is uh, going to tell and let's touch upon a different aspect the one of these uh, pivots and all of these pivots were data driven or were these some sort of a request that users put in and then or were you it was it a bit of both that you saw that evolution happening so we do not generally decide based on users feedback we most of the time decide based on uh, the data that we collect because what what user is saying and what user needs may be totally different there's a very famous example that if somebody would have asked uh, what if any ford would have asked his user what do you want they would have asked, they would have said faster horses but so that that's the concept we follow we do not generally act upon the user's feedback but we we keep that in mind that what user needs and then we decide based on the data uh, uh, that we collect so most of our we have created our own infrastructure for data collection data ingestion and uh, database uh, data based analytics we have a team for insights who uh, who, who generally satisfies our need uh, of asking questions so and we also encourage everyone in our in our uh, company so everyone has to take their decision based on the data uh, that that we are collecting so everyone generally goes to an insight team ask the question insight teams uh, goes into uh, the the infrastructure figure out the requirement and then gets back with a spreadsheet or a graph which is then used by product team or a research team or a content team to create or to take the decision that that they need to take so i believe everything has to be data uh, data driven it cannot be hunch based it cannot be uh, it cannot be based on user feedback it's a combination of both you're saying i would say mostly data based decision and uh, uh, but you should be listening to user feedback because user generally tells mostly about what they don't like uh, but don't listen to what they like or what they want what they want you can figure out from the data because if uh, we have millions of users and if 10 people from uh, comes to our feedback and says that we want exactly this feature we're not going to go ahead and create that feature we're going to then validate it that what user what is the problem that user is facing we'll go back to our infrastructure we'll validate what uh, what is the what is the problem user is facing because user cannot come up with an answer that this is what i need user can say this is the problem that i'm facing and it's my job in fact it's our job to come up with an answer that what should we give to him in the best way possible user doesn't know what technology is being used user doesn't know what is feasible what is not so listening to an answer from user is not going to help you have to even if somebody is demanding something you have to talk to them and get get to the uh get to the root of it and you have to understand the problem that user is facing and if you see that this is the problem that many of the user is facing if if there is no way to see it then uh, you have to uh, build an infrastructure for insight where you can figure out if this is a real problem or not and if it is a real problem then you have to come up with a solution but it is on you that you, uh, that who has to come up with a solution so let's talk about obviously one area that you must be seeing a lot of insight is what are people talking about what are people discussing and with millions of users obviously means you are you have 
a lot of data so does it help you understand let's say you know what are the trending topics what are the things that people are tending to follow what sort of topics are emerging what sort of emotional upheavals people are going through so you must be able to get a sense of all of that as well because uh, a lot of that data is going through you right so the thing is we have worked on multiple such things we have recently been published an insight on the emojis how users are using emoji uh, on our system and there are we collect Uh, so the thing is that there there is something called intent detection system that we have created so whenever there is an intent we detect the intent and we try to satisfy the intent of the user for example if somebody is saying happy birthday it's a wishing intent then we pop up a sticker bar that you should you should uh, send a happy birthday sticker somebody if, suppose if somebody is saying happy anniversary so we detect the intent so we have written an, an intent detection system which works offline and uh, in the device itself because if we make it server side then it's going it, it will ne- need a very good internet connection and there will be delay and when user is typing and uh, user is not going to accept any delay he's going to send it as it is so when you are writing happy birthday rahul or something we detect the intent and in uh, the keyboard in the device itself we generate a sticker when we display it as a suggestion that send it as a sticker so in this scale journey rahul what were some of the inflection points what were some of the places that gave you extraordinary growth so there was one your start which was your touch your, your first very first startup and you pivoted what were some of the you talked about a couple of growth hacks from touch talent can you talk about the numbers in terms of how your user base where it was in the beginning and what were some of the things that grew so i'll tell you uh, first i'll tell you about the uh, growth hack that we have been using in bobble so in bobble keyboard whenever you share a sticker there's a watermark associated with it before that we used to, we used to send a link as well so whenever you send a sticker a link is also sent along with it and uh, the link is clickable and that uh, so if i send you a sticker you click on the link which came alongside you will go to the play store and you can download bobble app over there and once you download you will get the you will get the same sticker pack downloaded automatically to your keyboard so it's helping you as well so if i am sending the link if i'm sending a sticker to you and i'm sending the link with it and you click on the link you will download the same sticker pack automatically so this is uh, one of the growth hack that gave us a lot of organic users but then user didn't like the this feature of sending link with every sticker that that they sent so we removed this feature and now whenever you send a sticker there is no link associated with it but there is a watermark and watermark says bobble keyboard and whenever you you receive a sticker generally you are not going to notice where you have created the sticker or or which app you have used to create the sticker because there are so many sticker apps and you don't worry about all those things nowadays every every uh, keyboard every application has a sticker features in it but what's good with our th- uh, our stickers is that it's a personalized sticker so it will contain your head if you have created the sticker and you have created uh, if you have taken a selfie then the sticker will contain your head it will be instantly recognizable so if you send it to me i can recognize it that uh, this is something that krishna has sent because krishna's head is present in there also if you write happy birthday rahul so most of the time stickers contains specific text like happy birthday or oh my god something like that but but with us it is like if you write happy birthday rahul the sticker that you sent or the gif that you sent will be customized with your head and your text and it will be sent to the user this way if you see something which is not which which will just catch your eyes that how has he created it how has he written the text inside the sticker or how has he put his own head inside the sticker then the user becomes curious the other person become curious and they started looking for it and there's a, a subtle watermark over there and the search for the watermark uh, the text bobble keyboard in play store 
and from play store they download our keyboard and this is one of the, the major organic growth factor that we have in fact most of our users are uh, have been organic we we didn't put much money into uh, get acquiring the user from advertisement channel and all which uh, every other company does initially to get uh, the amount of user then they need to kick off but we but after we have come up with this growth hack we didn't have to put any money on getting uh, users so everything is organic and uh, did it all happen because of app store optimization or because there was at some point in time a need for keyboards so what were some three or four things that went into that organic growth beyond the growth hack so you obviously had to create an initial set of users and then your growth hacks actually multiplied those users right what were some of the things that created those initial set of users for you so initial set of users were uh, simple like we had test talent we started uh, uh, messaging users to download pop uh, in fact in the home page itself we uh, we put our pobi keyboard application directly in the home page of test talent so we wanted everyone to download test talent we wanted to get that initial set of users at that time so we used our current base that we had then also at, at initially we had to do some marketing awesome. we had to buy some users through advertisement so that was done at that time app store optimization is something that we have recently started working on at that time we didn't do much of an app store optimization we just uh, did search engine optimization so our website uh, earlier our website was the one with, which you which used to be displayed when you search for pobi keyboard or keyboard application we did seo because we are good at that because test talent was a website and uh, we learned a lot about seo and we did that for pobi as well recently as in few uh, few years back we have started doing as aso and after doing aso we have started getting good amount of growth from direct play store as well fantastic so looking back rahul uh, would you change uh, anything why <laughs> why would i change that it's it's a very good thing that we have done and we are growing at a very very fast rate and now that xiaomi is on board we are talking to other oems as well and ho and uh, i'm hoping that though they will be on board as as well very soon and it will, we have already captured like 30% of india we uh, with another few oems will be able to capture 60 to 70% of all indian users so that's a very happy place to be i would not want to change anything so let me ask you maybe in future go on go on maybe in future maybe in future we would want to do something more something extra to to make it or oh, even more exponential the growth has to be exponential retention has to be very good we are, we are, we have seen a very good retention with our keyboard compared to other keyboards we have data from third party like similar web and all and we know that we are right now the best the most retained keyboard among all the keyboards including keyboard and swift key keyboard from google and swift key from microsoft we have the most engagement we have the most growth as well the most organic growth so that's 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 a happy place to be we we would like to optimize it further but i would change anything in the past and you are perhaps cross platform as well yes we have uh, uh, an application in ios as well okay what about monetization oh, what about that <laughs> have you monetized uh, big, have you monetized i don't you haven't yet begun monetizing the keyboard or do you have a pro version uh no we don't have a pro version we are coming up with a pro version uh, in uh, next few releases i think it's in the timeline for uh, next after two releases so we have been focusing on growth we have always been focusing on growth because we wanted to capture as many users as possible we wanted to satisfy them and then we wanted to create revenue because starting taking 100 rupees from 1000 people won't give you much money but taking one paisa from a million user will give you a lot of money so that's why we were, we were all we have been focusing on growth but with this with this uh, investment that we got recently 
uh, we we this is for uh, monetization and we will be focusing on revenue from now on and there are multiple features in place so till now we have been monetizing using advertisement so we used to we used to display advertisement uh, within the keyboard when you go to sticker page it's it's not a blocking advertisement you won't see it while you are typing but uh, it's something that you will see when you are browsing for for content so this is one way of monetization and uh, we are coming up with our pro products uh, uh, very soon it's like within a month we'll have a pro product awesome this is a this is a very different episode rahul i'm glad you went in i i personally did not intervene when you were talking about all the hacks because there is a lot of inspiration out there and yesterday i did a webinar and at the end of that webinar when i opened it up for questions one of uh, one of the actually two people said this is all fantastic i'm all motivated now but i still want the how i still want the tactics right so i've seen for instance uh, recently uh, there is a product called transferwise and there was an interview with the vp of growth in a hour long conversation there wasn't a single tactic or a how to that i could take away from that and the funny thing is show user love listen to your users all of that stuff is great but the question is very few people go down to the tactics and the details it's either a sign that they themselves were not involved in it and therefore it's at a macro level uh, but otherwise um, you went into a lot of detail uh, that is fabulous so in closing what would be your advice to people that are starting up or people that are already running their uh, startups and who are at various levels okay there are few things that i have learned that uh, that i would like to share and first of all thank you for your kind words <laughs> i i like to share stuff because i want everyone to grow it's not just for me uh, if everyone grows we will grow as a community so uh during my journey i've learned a few stuff as i was talking about earlier as well so i would like to uh, get the crux of it is like when you are building something always be ready for production so don't plan for like one year and then start working on it and then launch at the end of the year because something is going to get go wrong in between you have to be always ready think in modules like i'll launch module 1 then i'll launch module 2 Uh, and suppose if module one is very large, then you can launch the modules in phases. So that's what we do in Bobble as well. So this this is a very uh, good lesson that I learned, and it uh, and it is something that I would uh, ask everyone to follow because you will be ready all the time, and you will be able to experiment very fast. So what we do is we do a lot of experimentation. Even at even right now in Bobble, there are about six A/B testing running at different different uh, different different features. So A/B testing is something that I would uh, ask everyone to do. So whenever you are launching something, always do A/B test. Always create another option. Do not just launch one thing. Always create multiple options and then. give it to users and see how users are behaving if users are liking liking option a or like liking option b even if there is a 0.5 or 0.75 increment in retention or a smaller increment in engagement due to that overall when you do multiple features like this it will add up it will add up to a large 5 to 7% of increase which which you will love later on i can give and and one more thing that uh, don't don't think about complex things uh, i have seen many people thinking about many complex technologies that i'm going to use artificial intelligence to do this or to do that uh, this is, i believe this is a very wrong way of approaching your own startup i have seen multiple companies fail because of that people have very good solutions and they try to find problems around that so always try to find problems so if you see that this is the problem then you come up with a solution using technology do not start with technology and th- then find uh, problems around that i have seen many people uh, say that uh, so this is uh, one thing which is famous in us we are trying to we will build something similar over here so this will this might work this might not work it will work if 
India has if India faces similar kind of problem, it will not work if India does not face similar kind of problem. So I would ask every if you give our own audience to research more on problem first. Research as much uh, as you can about the problem, and then dive into the solution. And always create solution which is very simple. I would give an example. We created the concept of emoji bar. Emoji bar is something which is just a set of emoji present on top of uh, on top of keyboard. This is a very simple solution, but but it in, increased our emoji users to a large extent. Similarly, there are things like big emoji fonts and. Uh, suggestions prediction these are something very specific to my domain but what i'm suggesting is go for simple solution first because it's easy to implement you will be able to implement in a week or two send it to user and then uh, create a better version of that and then then send it again to the user this way your user will always be getting something and you will always be getting insight about the user so these are the things that i have learned so far that i would like to say wonderful rahul this has been a very fascinating episode personally this is way different from what we usually see and it does justice to your own technical background and your own uh, curious curious and uh, tinkering uh, ability and no wonder you are where you are with 30% of phones in india being covered 60 70% like you said more power to you guys and more power for you to cover the rest of asia as well and uh, i know this team has it i can see the passion and i can see the dna so we wish you the very best i'm sure there'll be a lot more learnings that you can come back and share with us at that point in time and maharajas of scale will be there to cheer you and we wish you the very best thanks thanks krishna thanks for the kind words and obviously uh, and of course we we want to be the number one keyboard in the world with the rate we are growing we surely will be We hope you enjoyed this story. If this story made a difference to you, tell us by leaving a comment on the website or our social media channels. Help us spread the love by subscribing, liking and sharing our show. We welcome speaker suggestions and collaboration. Write to me at tanya@maharajasofscale.com. At